Hello everyone. So on the first episode of Teaching Tactics on Fire and Maneuver, I've seen a few questions from people wondering what the sniper is doing in the battle drill in the third part of the video. So a, um, a British World War II battle drill is reconstructed and during the, um, the preparation for the assault there is a sniper and a grenadier and they get sent forward to prepare the enemy position with hand grenades or smoke grenades uh, before then the final assault by the rifle group goes in. And people have been wondering why you would send a sniper to crawl close to an enemy position. Isn't the sniper someone who is specialized in long distance shooting? And that's a very good question actually. So the, the main point here, the, the simple answer really, is that especially in the Second World War you've got proper snipers as we would still recognize them today. So the guys with the scoped rifles, ghillie suits, special training who go on missions that can last days. And then you got more like the sniper in quotation mark. Um, someone who gets called a sniper, even though he isn't really a sniper in the professional sense. And you see that a lot. So especially regarding the enemy, you always in memoirs and after action reports, it's always enemy sniper this, enemy sniper that. Every church tower, every tree has an enemy sniper. You'd think the entire German army consists of snipers. But that's because it is more of an informal way to refer to a single rifleman or maybe a small group of riflemen who are picking their own targets and are fighting independently from a machine gun or another weapon. They are really just um, yeah, riflemen essentially who are using their rifle to take pot shots. Which is essentially what a sniper is doing but in a much more deliberate professional way. So that's what this video is going to be about, delving into sniper and sniper and how that differed in Second World War terminology. So let's just get right into the drill that is discussed in the Teaching Tactics episode. So what I did in the video is I actually took three drills from separate uh, years and then I merged those together to form the one that you see in the video. So specifically it is the first one is from a book called Battle School from 1942. That's the one where the sniper and the grenadier come in. Then I took infantry training part 8 from 1944. That's the, the pamphlet that was in effect during the campaign in Northwest Europe. And that no longer mentions a sniper in the section in the attack drill. In fact, the only place where a sniper is still mentioned is under the paragraph on observation methods. And only there are special scouts or snipers mentioned as a uh, specialist tool that is still available to the platoon commander. So again, this is almost certainly referring to the second type of sniper, not someone who is actually trained in being a full-time sniper, but more like a squad or a platoon level marksman. So just a rifleman who is talented in shooting and then gets pointed out like, okay, Tommy, you are our rifle or our sniper for, uh, for now. And that's the only point where snipers are mentioned at all. And then moving on to the infantry training volume 4, which is from 1950. So that incorporates a lot of yeah, wartime knowledge, like uh, it consolidates it. There is no more mention of snipers at all, except for a brief uh, mention that they are grouped in the battalion level. So way outside the scope of the platoon or the section commander. So that already tells us that the, uh, the sniper in the way that one would properly describe a sniper could no longer be found in the platoon or section level. Now as for the, the Battle School 1942 drill that still actually mentions a sniper, I'll just go through the two relevant parts. So in the entire drill, which takes over four pages, he's only mentioned twice. So in the beginning, there's a part on the organization, how a platoon or section commander will organize the assaulting section before you start this drill. And of course it mentions the Ren group, which is the, the base of fire element, and then the rifle group, the remainder, it says the following. This group will deliver the assault when the following tasks will have to be done. Snipers, grenadiers, possibly wire cutters, assault men, and possibly a smoke generator man. 
Each man will be detailed to his task before the section commences its attack. Number of men required to do each job will vary with the task and with the strength of the section. So there you have it. A sniper is essentially just a rifleman from the rifle group who is designated to be the sniper for this specific mission. So it is the section commander pointing out, you Tommy, I trust you to be good with your rifle so you can function as our sniper in this attack. Now then the drill goes on. So you've got the, um, like I showed in the video, you got the advance to contact, you got the firefight, you got those bounding movements to a flank. And then you set up your brand gun position in a, a cutoff position, and then the, the riflemen they group together for the assault, so the sort of the broom and dustpan maneuver. So skipping ahead, you got the drill for the assault. That's the second point where the sniper is mentioned, and this is the part that I then included in my video. So to quote, the section, having infiltrated successfully, is now in a position to assault. The drills for this are as follows. Drill number one. Both Bren and rifle groups are in position, angle 90 degrees between them if possible. 90 degrees means that fire superiority can be kept up to the last possible moment. A sniper crawls to a position from which he can cover a grenadier, more than one may be used. Sniper will kill anyone trying to interfere with the grenadier. Drill number two. Grenadier crawls forward to grenade range and throws grenade. Drill number three. On burst of grenade or thickening up of smoke, rifle group assault. All firing from the hip as soon as they have come up level with the sniper and grenadier who join in the assault. So there again you see that he isn't actually doing sniper things. He's actually getting closer to the enemy to cover the grenadier who then crawls up behind him and then does grenadier things, namely throwing hand grenades or smoke grenades to prepare the enemy position for the assault by the rest of the rifle group. So these are clues here that really tell us that we're not dealing with a sniper at all in the conventional sense and not even a designated marksman as we would perhaps call it today. What this drill is actually referring to is someone who is a bit like a senior rifleman, a veteran, uh, someone who is trusted by the section commander to be able to shoot to kill. I think that's an important part. So it's not so much the range or the precision, but the, the willingness and the coolness and the experience to be able to actually quickly react and shoot at an enemy, which not everyone is capable of, especially not if you uh, are yeah, untested. So especially in this case, where the grenadier has to be kept safe. So this is essentially the grenadier, it's his mission. He is doing the important part, namely throwing grenades, and the sniper is there to escort him. So from the section commander's perspective, what the sniper has to do is while the grenadier has his hands full with the hand grenades, the sniper has to be a reliable, experienced senior rifleman who is then cool enough to take a shot if necessary. And that's not something you would trust to a rookie. So I think that's really the key here is he's not a sniper. As we would understand, no, he's a senior rifleman who can shoot to kill and is calm under tense conditions. So a, yeah, a trusted uh, rifleman. And to really illustrate how this differs from what an actual sniper would do, I have a, uh, another source here which is small arms training pamphlet number 28 from 1946. And that is the specialist sniper manual because the, um, the British and Commonwealth forces were actually quite uh, advanced when it comes to sniping in the modern sense. So guys in ghillie suits with specialized equipment, specialized training. So uh, what the British did is at the start of the war, they typically had a, a pair of snipers working at the company level. But then in 43 or 44, they grouped those together at the battalion level. So we got an eight man sniper section, which was then directly part of the battalion headquarters, usually working closely with the, um, with the intelligence section. So it was the battalion intelligence officer. 
he was usually the one drafting missions for the sniper section. Although the, the pamphlet actually says that it is very possible for the brigade to uh, sketch out missions for the snipers as well. So we're talking like in a tactical sense a fairly high level of use. So specialized snipers, a bit like special forces almost. And that's then also reflected in what the pamphlet describes. So uh, I'll just quote a, a couple of highlights here. Although the rifle is still the personal weapon of the majority of infantrymen, special training is required for its offensive use as an independent fire unit. So again, note the special training. Again, to quote, the best results from sniping are only achieved when the employment of snipers is carefully organized. Despite the independent nature of their work, it has been found that little is achieved and casualties among the snipers themselves are unnecessarily high unless this is done. So again, careful organization. Don't just put them in a rifle section and then start assaulting with them. No, organize them at a higher level where they can actually get missions that are tailored to their specialties. And then finally to quote again, a fully trained sniper can be defined as a soldier who is trained to locate the enemy, however well hidden, who can stalk or lie in wait for him, unseen, and who is an expert shot with the rifle. So again, very almost like a hunter, uh, not what you would typically expect of a regular rifleman in a rifle section. So that really is the, the key here, is understanding that just because something says someone is a sniper, doesn't mean it is a sniper as we would recognize it as a specialist. Someone who actually stalks, infiltrates, does long distance shooting. Oftentimes, especially in a uh, World War II setting, what it actually refers to is a, a senior rifleman, someone who can make the most of his rifle, not necessarily at a longer distance, but usually when it matters. So being able to sort of do uh, snapshots at uh, closer quarters and keep his cool while doing it. So hopefully that explains it. It is a good, good question. I admit it may have been a bit confusing to edit into the video all of a sudden. Uh, the reason I did it was because I, with it, I wanted to add some nuance to the drill because the 1944 and 1950 editions, they are very focused on the brand group and the rifle group and the brand group fires and then the rifle group, they do the close assault and it's a lot of um, sweeping through the position, bayonet, hand grenade. So I wanted to add a different perspective that shows a more deliberate assault with a, a preparation that goes in. So a sniper grenadier team that then goes forward to prep the position. I thought that would add some balance. But of course, just yeah, calling him a sniper adds some confusion. So good question and hopefully this clears it up. Thanks for watching.